Arda was the Quenya name for the world as whole. It was created within Air, the universe, by Eru Ilavatha, and later fashioned by the Valar. The shape of the land of Arda with its very structure and laws of nature, has changed several times, mainly due to battles with Melkor. But in the beginning, the atmosphere formed a match with the hemisphere above the earth, so the whole Arda formed a sphere, surrounded by the walls of night. Vista was the lowest of the three layers of the atmosphere filled with breathable air. It was divided into two parts, Fanimar and Iwinor. Fanimar was the upper part, a region of height, and the wide area of the sky where clouds form. In Quenya it means cloud home. The area without signs of life, although filled with air, lies too high even for winged animals. While the lower part was named Iwinor, known as the land of birds. Laying only upon Middle-earth and the Great Sea, the vista was bounded by the mountains of Valinor in the west, and the walls of the sun in the east. Above vista was Ilmen, and far above them Veia. Ilmen was a part of the atmosphere that surrounded the world of Arda, the region of air where the stars are. The flesh cannot stand the airs of Ilmen unaided. After the Valinor was made, the air in it was that of Ilmen, which can only be sustained by the servants of Manwe, or those to whom he has granted this ability. Thus the mortal creatures of Middle-earth were bound within the confines of Vista while they lived. So it happens many ages later. After the moon and sun are made by the Valar, two of the Maya were given the task of steering and guidance. Tilian got the tending of moon and Ariane was granted the sun. Varda proved them to traverse Ilmen's lower regions. And being closer than the stars, they outshine them by far. Initially, they voyage upon appointed courses above the girdle of Arda, from Valina unto the east and back, so that they would meet in the middle of each day above the earth. Tilian crossed the sky seven times before the advent of Ariane. Seeing her, his own course became wayward and of uncertain speed. Drawn by her splendor, he tried to come near Anar, the vessel of the sun, so that he was scorched, and the island of the moon was darkened. It is said that he had been in love with Ariane, and so was reckless at times, not following the correct path. Thus he was not always visible from solid earth, the land that can be habitational, referred as amber. It stands on the Martalma, or the earth roots, the foundations of the earth in the hidden half of Arda, far beneath the edge of the world. At first Ariane has steered the Anar continuously, from west to the east, always remaining in the sky. But the Valar changed this counsel. Este and her husband spoke against this. As the excessive heat and light had withered their gardens, the stars were hidden, and restful sleep had been banished from the earth. Varda listened to their counsel, to allow a time of night, and changed the course of the moon and the sun. Each celestial body would take turns, traveling through the sky as the other lay in Echaia, the waters of the outer sea. They are actually a compound of the substances of Veia, Ilmen, and Amber. The world is described as floating on the Echaia, like a ship on a sea. Ulmo, the lord of waters dwelled in it, below the roots of Amber. Echaia was a vast, cold, and dark enfolding ocean, that make the outer sphere of Arda. It flows completely around the world, forming a sea below it, and a form of air above it, called Veia. Described as extremely cold, its waters meet the waters of Belagar, the great surrounding sea in the northwest of Middle-earth, filled with ice flows and icebergs. Echaia cannot support any ships except the boats of Ulmo, for the other ships that tried to sail on it were sank. Echaia apparently disappeared. 
After the undying lands were removed from the circles of the world, in the cataclysm near the end of the second age, it may have been changed into the upper part of atmosphere. The last border of Arda, are the Illaramba. The walls of the world. They cannot be seen, nor can they be passed, save by the door of night. Arda was globed amid the void, thus the door of night and the walls of the world were visible only from Valinor, as Nierna's house looks outward where the stars follow the moon into the chasm of Ilmen. At the beginning of the first age, when the Noldor host left Ammon, the Valar raised up mountains to protect Valinor from any further attacks by Melkor. The Pelori, tallest mountains in Arda, on the far east, they set up the Wall of the Sun, a curve-shaped mountain range where the sun rose at dawn, so that no one would disturb the rising and falling of the sun and the moon. The land of Valinor slopes downward from the feet of the mountains, and its western shores stand at the level of the bottoms of the inner seas. The walls of the world are not far thence. And over against the westernmost shore amid Valinor, is Ando Loman, later guarded by Erendil the Blessed. The door of timeless night that pierced the walls and opens upon the void. An abstract and uninhabited region of nothingness, described as a zone of non-existence. Out of time and creation. The world is set amid the Kuma. The formless night, and the everlasting dark. No being in the void can use any power they possess within it. It is possible that the void outside of air and the one surrounding Arda were different, but this is not clearly defined. After the downfall of Numenor, Eru removed the undying lands from the physical world, and in the process he made a sphere around the Arda. The western edge of the formerly flat world was broken off and shifted into another plane, and the easternmost side of the earth was bent down, so it connected up with the broken edge in the west. Two water surfaces that were on either side of Middle Earth just poured off from north and south. The Valar made the area from the western seas, all the way to the eastern sea into a globe, so one who sailed west, ended up landing on the eastern shores. Only the grey ships of the Eldar can still follow the straight road. They sail westwards as if they were still on the plane of the flat world, rather than following the curvature of the planet around. To an outside observer, their ships would appear to gradually lift out of the ocean into the air, but also fade from sight, as they passed into the spiritual world.